Alright guys, I know you've missed me, I've been away, I've come back with fruit of a real bad attitude and I'm going to come back and attack some fish and tackle companies today and um, bait companies and all the other rubbish in uh, fishing these days, carp fishing particularly obviously. Um, it's horrendous at the moment. When I was away on holiday, all I kept on seeing is like stupid buzzwords at the moment. The new one is a food source, like the carp search out a food source. I've gone about this quite a few times, and it's not like um, I'm an expert, right? But <laughs> I catch a lot of fish. To me, that means a lot. Somebody catches a lot of fish. Not somebody who just catches one fish, one big fish a year, okay? Consistently catching a lot of fish. And I do. Um, and loads of different venues, and all the time. And at the moment, I've got a venue at the moment where it's a low stock of carp. It's really weedy, really hard to fish. And what a surprise. The first fish, I was, they said it's hard to fish. Be lucky to catch a carp. Um, uh, three trips, two carp, straight away on the float on bread, stalking them out. Um, it's gene clear water, banging uh, fish I caught. Um, but it just proves to me again. It just reiterates what I was going on with the boily scam video and everything else. And I even I think Corda are listening at the moment. I was watching Corda yesterday, and um, they were using worms, kilos and kilos of worms on B1. And why is that? Because they've gone off the boilies. So. It's so weird to me that people are like, oh, boilies, 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 boilies. And even on the videos now, they're moving away from that and start saying, oh, we use worm because maggot's been banned. So if the nutritional value was right, okay, and everyone's using boilies, why are they eating maggots? Because they lose weight when they eat maggots, right? It's why they ban them, right? So why have they done that? The, my local water near me, they've only allowed boilies. So it's going to have this weird effect because you can't go there with anything else. You've got to use boilies. So if you're there for three or four days, how many kilos are you going to go through? So, yeah, it's just, it's crazy, man. The fishing industry at the moment, and even the anglers, the top anglers, you lot have got something to say for yourselves. I can tell you that now. Because uh, you're selling rubbish. You're all bullshitting. You're all lying. And uh, it does my tits in. Like, And on the worst ones, on the groups, if you go on the fishing groups on, on Facebook and all that, they are horrendous. The people on there, they ain't got a clue what they're talking about. Uh, one guy trying to give me crap on there, like his PB was fourteen pound. You know, it's like big fish don't mean nothing, right? Consistency catching fish, okay, catching a lot of fish, okay. And only one of my mates who's honestly not a good angler went to linear cast out and caught thirty, okay. And trust me, I would out fish him every day of the week because he's got a bigger PB. That means he's a better fisherman than me, you know. And he doesn't even fish anymore, so it just shows the type. Of, that's what I'm saying with that type of fishing. You could. And even worse with the bloody bait boats and God knows what else. Don't try and tell me you're a decent angler if you use a bait boat because that's just rubbish to me, man. Uh, you can buy a rig, you can get a bait boat and just drop it in position. That oh, where's the angling that? And people get oh, it's, it's we're moving forward. What to the point where we didn't even cast anymore? Like oh, what we use? Oh, you know, it's weird to me. Um, anyway, I'm going off that tantrum. The baits, the boilies, the 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 wafters, the all the other crap at the moment. And uh, the Ronnie rigs, and um, and uh, the other one I keep hearing at the moment, instant action, great hook holds. I want it in the right in the bottom lip, and it's like, yeah, I want my hooks in its eye. Which thing I want? I want it bang there, and like the hook's going in, it's not coming out. Well, well, pretty, pretty much what a hook's designed to do. Why are you telling me things? What? What? what are just oxymoron. Obviously, I know that. Well, the hook goes. No, when my rigs when they go in, they pop back out again. Like what are you, why are you saying this weird stuff all the time in fishing videos? I don't know. They do it all the time. Instant action. Yeah, I put my bait out there and I want it to go off in an hour. I don't want to catch a fish straight away. I want it two hours. Instant. Everybody wants instant action. That's just like, you know, it's honestly the words they use in fishing. I, I watch a lot just so I can get some ammunition. <laughs> I don't have to watch two cord DVDs, mind you. I've got, I've got enough ammunition. Um, but I've been away for a week, as you know, so I haven't been doing any videos. And... Um, just the total carp, all the other ones on Facebook, they are so cringe, man. It's every single bait company, every day. Some guy who, instead of paying £7 a kilo, is getting it £6 a kilo because he's sponsored, right? And uh, he'd be like, oh, uh, let's just make up a one. I'll make up, I'll make up a name because I don't want to give some crap to some company I don't even know because I don't know if they're good or not. So it'd be pretty harsh for me to do that. So let's just say... Um, Rail boilies. There you go. Look at that. Just made one up. Rail boilies. Okay, on the rail, <laughs> right? Um, rail boilies. Right. I'll guaranteed. Like, say I'm sponsored by Rail Boilies. Okay. Every time I catch a fish, I can say Rail Boilies, even when I don't catch on them. Obviously, because I'm getting the bait for cheaper. 
okay it's just it's just common sense okay but you wouldn't know this stuff until you know like people who are doing it okay like I fish with bread, as you've seen, and I catch a lot of fish on bread and corn and chickpeas, okay? If I was sponsored and I was a dickhead and I was lying to you lot, um, I'd be like, oh, yeah, it was on the sauce. Uh, oh, and he did it. And like, <laughs> it was on the rail. It was on the rail. I caught on the rail and the rail wafter. Match the hatch, blah, 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 blah. And it is rubbish, man. Trust me, these guys are talking crap. Um, I've noticed on even more than videos now that a lot of them are not even using bullies. They're using maggots um, on the hook baits and stuff like that. I wonder why that is. And um, the new one I'm going to attack coming at it is um that sent from hell i didn't use it right so people be like yeah how can you say that because i'm a dick all right <laughs> no because it just sounds weird to me right so you go on about boilies and nutritional value okay so i put out all this bait right the carp again mm, nutritional value mm, these are better than the nash crush over there these are nutritional value these are full of the things that i'm searching for the salt and the amino acids Right, so the carp's searching, okay, for the food source, okay? And you notice I keep doing that with the food source crap, okay? Um, so he's searching for a decent food source. And then you got sent from shit, okay? Oh, sent from hell, okay? The sent from shit, we're gonna call it, okay? The sent from shit, okay? So it's munching all these lovely tasting boilies, say, like squid throwing, oh, oh, these are nice. Oh, oh, that smells like shit, okay? Well, let's go and eat that, okay? Don't you think that's strange? Like if you if you if they're on your bait, okay, and you're feeding them your boilies, and you know they're eating your boilies, why aren't you fishing with your boilies then? Okay, and I know reason why we don't. <laughs> I know why I don't. Okay, because you want normally, okay, I would use like a something was slightly different to my hook baits, so it gets picked up first. Okay, but I'm not under the illusion that it's always eating my bait. There's quite a few times I know, well, I know for a fact that I put out, say, a load of corn and a load of other baits, and they've just gone down and grabbed my hook bait. That happens quite a lot, and people don't get it. Um, because fish can just hover around a lot, and they just cruise in and pick up things they want. So normally, I try to make my hook bait stand out, not by using a scent of shit, okay? I normally use, if you watch any of my videos, I use a fake maggot or half a little pop-up. Just something, so it just looks slightly different to what I'm actually using. Or I'll use completely different, right? I'll use like, say, a 10 mil boilie and I'll just be feeding corn, okay? And there's a reason, that's what I said, to pick out the, the Pacific um, fish. But the scent from hell, it's like, don't you think that with all glugs, it's quite strange that, I know it's trying to use trying to signal the fish to try and pick it up, but the way it, they're set and the way they sell it, it is rubbish, man. The scent from hell, do you want, man? It's a little rubbish. I keep saying it on Facebook, and I'm like, ugh. So yeah, I'm going to spend 15 quid, or let's say £12 on a kilo of boilies, and I'm going to dip them in shit. Or I'll just dip my hook bait in it, okay? It, I guarantee you just don't dip it in that crap, and I'll just dip it in krill, you're going to get the same results, okay? So I get the picking out, but to the point of where it smells of hell, like that to me is a little shit, okay? I get it if you want to dip it in a little bit of krill or something, so just a little bit, you know, the flavour is a little bit different to what's in there. But still, if you're, you know, it's that confident with your boilies, why aren't you just using the boilie? Why aren't you just hollow it out and put a pop-up inside, um, you know, a cork inside, and have that popped up if, if you think they're on your bait? You know, when people keep saying it's about nutritional value, why are they picking up a wafter then? What, the, what is a wafter? Do you get what I mean? So yeah, I'm not into any allusions to that nutritional value. If you see that, I won't even go fishing without corn or bread, and that is crap. So why why uh, the nutritional value rubbish, okay? B1, I was watching one of them, Dave Fairbrass is getting old, can't fish anymore, can he? Well, that spodding's done him in. He ain't spodding no more, was he? Um, <laughs> it was cringy, man. I watched an hour video, two fish were caught. Spodding corn out. Spodding corn out over six. That's what they were doing. And then he was like, oh, we're going to try the worms. So he bought in two kilos of worms, what were like 30 quid, chopped them all up and then put them in the swim. And I'm sat there going, I've just watched this for this information. Stuff that I already know. And there was no boilies in sight. And they even said, "There's no, we're not using boilies, we're using corn. Why is that? Why are they using corn and B1 if they're nutritional value? Okay, if all these bait companies keep saying out nutritional value, why are all the fish in B1 getting caught in corn? There's nothing in corn. They were spawning out and it was just particle. It's just nothing in it. It was all grounded up. So I, this is why I know it, these are just buzzwords, okay? They're just using it to get you grabbing on it. And there is obviously better boilie companies than other boilie companies, right? But the difference is it doesn't make that much of a difference. It's the whole point, especially when you're fishing runs, waters, you're fishing B1, all these other crap, man. Use corn, pellet, hemp, 
Um, and they will smash it. You don't even need boilies. So what I keep saying on this total cut, I'm going to France for a week. I don't need boilies doing it. It's like, oh, I always just put underneath take a worm, you know, because it's just, it's so stupid, man. And what do I need? You need carp bait. That's what you need, carp bait. You don't need boilies, you need carp bait. I will go fishing 90% of the time with no boilies. Like, don't even think about using boilies because I know that multiple different food sources in Food source, said it, I said it. Different food sources in the in the swim, there, it's got more chance of me getting a pickup because there's like part, there's loads of different things. And then another thing is if you want to read some crap, go and read on my boily scam, my boily scam video, my biggest hit. And I hate it, it's my biggest hit, to be honest with you. I'm glad it got me the views and the, and the acknowledgement, but uh, I don't, like, I've done better fishing than that. <laughs> but just look at the comments. They are people who work for bait companies or morons, just morons. One comment on there was cringy and he's still defending it. I was like, mate, you're a moron. You've got to, you've got to be working for some company or you're just an idiot, right? Seven kilos a session of boilies. And he's like, I'm a boilie man. Like he's proud. I'm a boilie man. Oh, I'm really proud that I chuck in for hundreds of pounds worth of bait. And I've never even tried pellet. Like, try other baits, guys. Just try other baits. If you're just a boilie man, what I think is retarded, um... Just go and try some other baits. I think you'd be pleasantly surprised. I learned that a lot. Okay, I used to use, I, when I first started fishing, I obviously just use boilies and a bag of pellet. And I started thinking, I've got no boilies, I've only got pellet, so I'd use pellet on corn. And I'd bag up. And I'm thinking, it's no different than when I'm using boilies. Sometimes I get a bit, well, a lot of the time I get actually better and more fish, that's why I do it. So it's like, why would I do that to myself? Why? It's really strange to me. Um, and have you seen on the, the, the lakes that I've been fishing, I catch so many fish on fucking, on Pepper Army. Pepper army, why is that? Because it stinks. It's it's just meaty. There's nothing special about it, but they just love it. And I catch a lot of fish on pepper army. Did a video and I got quite a lot of views actually on that. And um, I was just catching a local water, just catching fish all day on, on pepper army. I'm not feeding it. I was just feeding corn, you know. But like to me, I wouldn't go fishing without a bag of bread, you know. And like and um, I'm starting to lose myself now. And I oh, on a train of thought. That was like a proper. <laughs> Boosh, that's five days of crap. I don't even edit, I don't mind even edit that. That's 12 minutes. All right, so I'm gonna stop there, have a little regroup, <laughs> since we've been running. The dogs fell asleep. Um, but yeah, honestly, I've been away, and some of the stuff I just keep reading, I'm like, I've got to do a video on this. I just tell people, like, it's crap. You're talking crap. Food source, crap. Um, instant action, crap. If they're saying this stuff, trust me, it's just absolute rubbish, man. Instant action. Everyone instant action. It's just things all crap, you know? It's like, it's so weird. And it's like, um, there's no money in worms, okay? There's no money in corn, okay? But it's money in boilies. And there always will be if it's idiots buying them and falling into the crap. Don't you ever think about that with the bags? When you look at some of the bags, the bags are so all different, look at completely different. And you're thinking, you didn't really get that ground bait or any other bait. It's because they know they're drawing the angler, not the carping. <laughs> you know, they say instant action. Yeah, okay, instant action. What, so a seven pound kilo bag is gonna be better than a 12 pound kilo bag? I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is, if you're fishing a lot like I do, you can use a lot of different baits. Um, so just thinking one-minded, like I need, um, the krill, okay, the krill's what got him on it, I, think I would, could never catch on whatever crap boilie make, okay, squid, okay, squid doesn't work for me at my lake, I only catch on krill, it's probably because you're in the wrong swim, mate, you're fishing the wrong area, there's never been really a bait I can think of that I haven't caught on, like, all of them work, all of them work, and on different days, certain things will work better than others, okay, but to think that boilies are be all and end all, it's crap, man. And the food source rubbish is such rubbish. I've proved that time and time again on my channel. I've caught Matt the other day when I went night fishing and I caught that carp, wild carp, on a worm in the middle of the night in a wild lake full of weed and I was just bouncing it around. Uh, yeah, nutritional food source, a size six circle with a fucking worm hanging off it. There was no, it was, it was that predatory response I was going on about my lat on the, on the body scan video. They get that predatory response and they grab stuff. Wild carp, middle of the lake, boom, middle of the night. Just grabbed the worm, was bouncing around trying to grab eels because the eel kept on trying to grab my worm. So I kept on bouncing it back and I found this little. What the fuck is that? That's what happened. That's what happened. Sorry. <laughs> but yeah, you know, it was the predatory response. Nutritional value. Crap, man. 
Honestly, the amount of fish I catch on bread is unbelievable. I'm at a wild, the lake that I'm fishing at the moment, right? It's wild lake, it's got plenty of food in it. It's really weedy. There's loads of tension. They, they, if I never went there, no one ever angler went there. I'm mainly angler, but it's just like some stealing my spots at the moment. <laughs> anyway, but I'm mainly the main angler that goes there. If I didn't go there, those fish would just carry on living, right? Okay, so I've already caught one fish twice, okay? I've caught another fish before, but I'm catching them on bread. Oh yeah, they're searching out bread. Why do you search out bread? Because it goes in there every single day. Well, not every single day, but every couple of days. And it's free. It just goes in there. It's easy for them. It's easy for them. There's no hook baits. No one's catching them. So they just eat bread, eat bread, eat bread, eat bread. I go there, where they're fishing with bread. Boom, drop down with bread. Oh, suddenly I'm into a carp. What's going on? You know, to me, it's just common sense. Um, and the same when I go carp fishing, right? The other lake that I go fishing, the part like the my, my local lake. Um, I, on one of the videos, I'm fishing on the bottom. <laughs> I've got pellet out, everything, right? I think pellet, and I was using uh, 10 mil boiling, I have pellet out and corn, right? And then about five rod legs behind, the fish are on the surface taking bread. It's like, why are they going to have additional value? Or they might not be able to see it. So I fire more bait out, nothing happens. Fire more bait out, nothing happens. And this went on for about 40 minutes. And I know for a fact, I could have walked around with bread and caught those fish straight away. And this is what I'm seeing with the noggin with an angler. If you can't float fish, you just miss that opportunity. And you wouldn't even think it was an opportunity because you're like, ooh, well, they get on the nutritional value. No, they won't. They're just going to eat whatever's free and safe. If they can eat bread with never getting a hook in their mouths, they just eat bread. Like, you know, that's, that's the thing with it. It's reason why, another reason why they ban maggots as well, because it's quite hard to catch fish on maggots. Um, so you have to use maggots, and they don't want you catching loads of fish. And B1, they said it was, I think that they were making out it was the fish were losing weight and things like that. There's loads of reasons why. But that's why, uh, to me, I'm like, why is everyone going about boys? Like, all the top anglers know maggots smash carp out, right? So what, what is the big boilies sketch about? I never get it. Like, and boilies, there's a reason for them that you can put off with a fish, blah, 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 right? You can use a 20 mil pellet, I guarantee you catch for half pop up on it. I'll do it on my next video. I'll get an 18 mil pellet or a 60, or 15 mil pellet, half pop up on it. I guarantee you I'll catch carp on it then and push the bream off. Well, because the bream I catch are only small, so they're not too bad. But I know what bream are like. You can catch bream on 18 mil boilies, so don't tell me that crap. If you've got a six, seven pound bream and you want your bait, you're gonna have it. Um, the last thing, last thing, because I'm proper ranting now, 17 minutes. Ronnie Riggs, oh, right. Ronnie Riggs are really good on certain waters, right? If you want to run to water and it's silty bottom, right, and um, you can present a built fit bait on the bottom, present it on the bottom. Don't just go, I see how many carp videos I've seen at the moment, I just chuck a Ronnie Rig out. One, that's lazy, <laughs> right? Two, um, they're fit, meant for fishing certain ways. Like when I use the pop ups, if you notice, my pop up rig, I'm fishing for tench and wild carp. And there's a reason, because I'm one weed. Right, so I want my hook bait off that bottom because I can't have it sitting on the bottom, okay? Same principle with the Ronnie Rick, okay? It kind of sits up, it's real, really obtuse in their face, right? If you're fishing for fish, what are averaging, say, six to 12 pound, right? The profile of the fish is not gonna be so high. So they're gonna be like this, and all they see is a size eight, size six hook just hanging there in front of their face. So why you wouldn't get as many pickups? I, my PB was from a water where everybody was using, uh, what's it called? And everyone was like, oh, you're lucky to catch in this water. Okay, so I was like, oh, all right, let's see how I get on. And uh, my mate invited me there. And um, show away, in the swim, I found, uh, is it a combi rig or a choddy? I think it was a choddy. And my mate was like, yeah, that's what everyone uses. And, you know, real stiff, like right in your face rig, you know? And I was like, okay, so if that's everyone's using, I want to change. New fish have been caught for a couple of days. So I was like, well, I don't want to be fishing the same way they're fishing because that makes no sense. Because obviously the fish become wary. So people didn't get, they become wary of certain things. So I was like, right then, I'll, I'll put my rig flat on the bottom. So I'd done a D-rig flat on the bottom, hook flat, okay? So the bait was on the top. Well, coincidence, I had three fish in the night and I was with my mate who had a fish for like three months out of there. And uh, my PB of 28, uh, 26, or 27 pound, I can't really remember. He knows, it's 26 and a half, and he goes, <coughs> and I had two other fish, what were like 15 and another one was like 14. But to, in my first night there on a syndicate water with not loads of fish in it, and I caught three fish in one evening, did not, in the night, did not really, dis well, I was shocked when I caught the first PB, my PB, yeah. But the other two fish I wasn't, because I was thinking, I know why. Because everybody's fishing with the rigs up in the air, right? Um, I did it the other day when I was on my uh, my local little park lake. I was using a pop-up, and I went down there in the evening, and I literally struggled. I had one fish that took me into reed, uh, sorry, took me to take me into reeds, and I hook pulled, and that was it, right? In about three hours, I was thinking, Normally about five or six fish by now. It's a bit weird. So next morning, went back there, thought, right, I'll use bottom rigs. What a surprise, on that video, I think I had eight fish. 
I went back and come back again and caught more fish. So, you know, that's what I say about that. The pop-up, even a pop-up on certain waters, they, they, they used to smash it. But when the fish start getting caught them all the time, they, they get wary of a pop-up. So you have to constantly, you know, evolve in your rig slightly to just put them off. Uh, sorry, just to change things around all the time. Trust me, I, I've tried um, pop-ups in a lot of different waters and I don't succeed that well in them. Only on weedy waters, really. Not on silty flat bottoms, there's no need to be fishing with a pop-up. It really isn't. And I've done it quite a few times. And I would anytime prefer a bottom bait or a, a snowman rig anytime over a big pop up with a size six hook in it. Okay? It's because they're fishing for massive fish, 30, 40 pounders. The profile shoes, they come down, they can't see that with a little like the pop ups like that. Looks like that. They can't see it, right? But when you've got a small fish and the profile's coming this way, they see it. So you get less bites. And if you're like me and, and I'm fishing for bites, I'm not fishing for a PB when my PB is not in the lake. Okay? If the PB is not in the lake, then don't worry about that, you want numbers. You don't want just one fish, but oh, I sat here for 12 hours and I had one fish, mate. Like, yeah, it was 12 pounds. If I can have 20 fish and they're all under 12 pounds, I'm gonna have 20 fish all day long, mate. So that's what I'm saying with numbers when you're catching that. Pop-ups not always the best, in my opinion, unless you're cutting a pop-up and really making it really small, like aiming less than a 10, 10 mil pop-up, really small. Um, why do you think Ziggs at the moment? I was watching Ali Media, one of the biggest bullshitters. Um, and his zigs are tiny. His zigs were tiny. He was using small hooks and tiny little zigs. Because, again, it's where the fish are swimming through the water, depending where they are. And he was using a deeper, so he told him the depth and that where they were too. And he was like, yeah, my fish senses are telling me that they want a zig. No, mate, your robot did. Your little bloody deeper thing told you that it did. Because it told you the depth of the water. And he's like, oh, I put out a six foot zig. Because you knew they're fishing, like they're swimming around on like seven foot. And then he was like, yeah, my, my, uh, my fishing knowledge told me that. No, it didn't, mate. You had your boat out there as well, Z-Dog, whatever he called it. He had that out there first, dropping the rig out there. It's just like, oh, man, don't even get me started off. <laughs> but, yeah, trying to make out like it was his fishing. Ones. Zigs, when you're fishing with zigs, you have to have them at different depths. There's a reason. Because, obviously, the fish is fish swimming at different depths, and you don't, you know, zigs up here, it's 14 foot deep, right? You're fishing at 13, the fish is at 6. You have no chance. No chance. But if you get your zig right, and the fish is here, and he's swimming past here... It's a high possibility that you catch it because you can't see the hook. It's all it is. There's not, not only like, I was thinking about this loads, like why, why? And they're using nine pound line on zig line. Why is that? Because they know the fish can see a 12 pound line sticking through with a size 20, uh, a size four hook with a tiny little pop up on it. Okay, so that's why they're scaling it down, scaling it down. Which size me? I, I do one where I do a zig with like a size 14 hook and a little, little fake bug or something. I guarantee you catch on it all day. It's just, it's just the way things are. They don't want to, you know, that's what I hate about that kind of stuff. They never really tell you why. They didn't say why he's using tiny zigs. It's because they've been caught on big zigs, haven't they? Everyone's been using 10 pound or 20 pound line or whatever they use for zigs now and big hooks and uh, they've been hammered on it. So he's like, right, I scale down, scale down, scale down. So yeah, you know, it's crazy to me. And if you go and talk to a match guy about boilies, they'd be like, what are you going on about? Like they don't even use them. So, and they catch a lot of fish. If you watch the carp guys versus the match fishermen, they was pretty close when I was watching that and it didn't surprise me. Because I know um, match anglers. Match anglers, they have a weird, they have a weird perspective on, on fishing, but they catch a lot of fish. And a lot more than specimen anglers, obviously. A specimen angler catches two or three fish like a year or whatever, especially if you're river fishing. And um, the, 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 the match angler catches fish day in, day in, day in, day out. So the difference is he's going to get much better at playing fish, for one. And two is that they understand feeding habits, especially on pressured waters, the way the fish are. They're up in the water, they're on the bottom of the water. Um, and, they, you know, they use pellet wagglers for, for technically zig fishing, okay? Because pellet, pellet wagglers, same principle. You have your, your float, you have your long long hook link, you sink and it sinks down underneath a big, huge float. They take it like a dog biscuit or whatever else you've got in the middle. You can have it on the surface, obviously like surface fishing, or on the bottom, uh, not on the bottom, halfway through the surface. And the fish are grabbing it because they know the carp are grabbing the pellet as it goes through the uh, surface layers. So that's why, you know, match guys are bagging up on pellet wagglers, you know? So th that kind of stuff, go and speak to a match angler. Go and sit with a match angler for a day and you'll find out a lot of stuff. Don't get me wrong, they go on about weird stuff for colours of maggots. <laughs> even all the tents when I was like, oh, bronze, bronze, no, only red. It's like, oh, don't even get me on the start on that stuff. But yeah, match anglers have got some weird perspective on stuff, but they understand about making your hook bait stand out. So they use loads of little tiny little wafters, little anything that's tiny which stands out to their hook bait. So they have a different perspective again on it. And when you speak to them, and as long as they ain't saying, oh, I catch 
um, on cast or on a Wednesday and I catch on Maggot on a Tuesday, then have a listen to them, do you know what I mean? Because they catch a lot of fish, and I mean a lot of fish. When you hear the, the weights they catch, most carp anglers wouldn't be able to do that in a day. They honestly wouldn't. Some match anglers would absolutely smash some of these guys who think they're fucking the boys or work for some... Um, well, they're getting like two pound off a kilo and they're sponsored. Okay. That's not sponsored, but yeah. Okay. They, they just literally write to a company. Oh, can I, can I work for you? And they're like, no, you can't work for us. But what we do is you can be like a field tester. That's the one, the field tester. So we'll give you a kilo of boilies for 10 pound and they're going for 12 pound in the shop. That's literally it. That's all these guys are doing. So don't get me wrong thinking that these guys are sponsored and you've got your local mate around the corner. He's like, yeah. This is blah, 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 rail baits. I caught this on her and on every single um, page, you'd be like, rail baits, mate, rail baits, mate, rail baits, mate. And it's like, it's cringy, guys. It's cringy as anything. And all your car planning, you know there's one you got on your face, but I got about four of them. One I had to block the other day. He's an idiot, man. Just cringy, like, oh, look at me. I need a bait company to need me. Okay, what I want is Hovis. Give me Hovis. More monster or rock star. Some real shit. <laughs> yeah, and I Hovis bread. Yeah, Hovis, get back to me, okay? I bag up on yours, okay? And one thing I was going to say the other day, I thought it would be quite funny. I'm going to spot some bread out. <laughs> I'm going to get a load of bread. I'm going to mosh it up. And I'm going to spot it out. It's kind of what I do for uh, roach fishing, but I don't spot it out. I chuck it out a massive handful. So it's just bits. I guarantee it would work. <laughs> guarantee it would work. Spawn it out. Don't use ground bait. Just use... Ground up corn and bread. I guaranteed if you just spotted that out, you smash it. Especially on water where there's bread going. Because I have found carp will take bread in water where they don't even get bread. Honestly, if you seen when I went to um, White Acres, bread is banned, right? See how many fish I had off the surface on bread? It's banned. They're not allowed to fish with it in there. So, so why? Why are you allowed to fish with bread? Oh, because the bird life. But you can fish with pellet where you still catch birds. So, yeah, it's totally rubbish. Oh, yeah, there you go. Last little point about nutritional value. Okay, I'm using dog biscuits. Okay, why do you bag up on dog biscuits? You've got nutritional value, cat biscuits. I use do cheap, cheap ass dog biscuits and you catch them fish on them. Why is it? Because they love surface baits. Because it ain't, don't feel so dangerous for them. And if you watch how fish act on the surface, right? Imagine that on the bottom. When fish on the jump for strainers, I remember watching Fairbrass and you go, Fairbrass, you're, wrong. You're, you're not a very good angler in my opinion. Okay, he's a one track angler. Three rods, one spot. <laughs> That's it, okay? Can't think outside the box, right? I was watching him with Terry Hearn like 20 years, 15 years ago. He might have got a bit better now. But good even surface fish. He says, so frustrating. Ah, so frustrating. Ah, so frustrating. I can't be bold with it. It's like, that's what it's like on the bottom. You just don't see in it. On the surface, it's literally, that's how they react. You see them come up to your bait, boom, boom. Or they whack it with their tails. And PVA backs, they just come down, bang, and smash it. And honestly, people's heads to what actually happened then, it's completely different. So, so I say about being on zig fish, being on a surface fish, being on a bottom fish, it's going to help you in your angling. I never used to be a good surface, uh, surface angler. I'm a better, like, I'd say, like stalking, like kind of one fish at a time, pulling them out, that kind of guy, really. Then putting loads of baits out and fishing. But I used to fish with my mate, he was really good at surface angling. And he smashed it. He used to absolutely smash it. And if you can't surface fish, you're going to get smashed by an angler who can go bottom surface and, and bottom. Um, you know, all the different layers, you know? And it's again, I was watching another video again, he's meant to be a good YouTuber, and he's like, oh, they're all on the surface, but I'm not going to bother, I don't want to try zigs. We well, do want to catch fish then. You want to spend 30, 40 quid on boilies, but you don't want to try zig out. Oh, you're a muppet. Like, you have to. If the, whatever the fish are doing, you have to fish those conditions. You can't just dictate it because you're like, I don't like zigs. Well, you have to, you have to fish with them. It's as simple as that. If, if like, you can't catch them off the surface, you can't catch them on the bottom. You have to use a zig on you. It's, it's weird to me. People go, no, nah, I'm not just on the bottom. I get it when you want to keep one bottle on the one rod on the bottom, but you, you have to fish the way the fish have uh, fished in the conditions. Right, anyway, guys, I'm going to shoot on now because I've been going on one for about 20, 28 minutes. Oh, Jesus, Jesus. It's just come out from the dam, and it? It's come out from the dam. Hey, yeah, the dog's asleep. Hey. Yeah. And I'm off fishing literally in a bit. So I'll be able to post up a decent video. Sorry about the random rant. Uh, well, not random rant. I've been wanting a rant for ages. I've just been building it up, building it up, building it up. Uh, and I just wanted to come back on a full blown assault. I've been sat there literally. I was going to do one on the bank of Amsterdam. But I thought, oh, I just remember this. It's just a bit weird, basically. There's a lot of people around. But anyway, we'll finish off. I'll press stop. And then we'll go have a little look at my tank and the pond. Because everyone wants to see the pond. I'll put some bait in there. Try and get them going. But it's a bit cloudy today. But anyway, bing, bang, bosh. <laughs> All right then guys, here's the tank. My newt in it, my Japanese far belly newt. I don't know if I've actually gone too far into this, 
But there you go, look, it's my planter tank, the old moss. Got a few babies in there. Bloody sunlight. <laughs> but this tank takes me hours, absolutely hours. And uh, I don't know where my newt is, she's hiding somewhere. It's like 22 years old, my newt. And uh, he's, uh, that fish is bred in here. You know, beautiful. My little catfish, my loaches. But yeah, this tank's doing really well. I've been away for, well, I've been away obviously for five days and it still looks pretty good. Got to do a bit of pruning and stuff. But anyway, that's the tank. You all love the tank. And there's the dog. <laughs> but here we go, the, the pond. Let me just out the way, I'm just cleaning the filter out. Let's just start to flower on my flowers. There's the cup. There they are. What have you been waiting for, guys? The cup. The cup. You see, I'm trying to be a bit quiet because they'd be funny otherwise. But yeah, there's the flowers. I've got my lily going really well in there now. It's got a bulb. You might see, I see that bulb. It is there. <laughs> That's going to be flowering. I've got these little, little um, lilies out of the river. Big lily was out of my dad's garden. But I think it looks really nice now. Oh, it looks much better. Don't start eating. Oi! Sorry, my dog's <laughs> decided to eat my neck, as he always does. But this is the actual pond in full, full width. So about the water on the floor. It's just clearing the filter out. But yeah, the fish still seem quite happy. Oh, there we go. There's Biggie. There's Biggie. Yeah, so they can be quite skittish. Um, I might try and put some more bait in so you can get them going. I see these fish are not even being hooked before. And they're still skittish. These fish, they're carp and naturally skittish. That's what they're like. Oh, there we go, guys. They're coming, they're coming. There we go. Any fishy fishies? Yeah, I said I'd do an update on the, on the pond. My dog's doing some random stuff. Sorry, I'm just standing in the front of the pond. Thought you'd want to see the fish. So there we go. So you see me. So I mean, it's weird, isn't it? I'm not, they've never been caught. I've never done anything to them. <laughs> Right, so there we go. All right, guys, um, like and subscribe to my channel, Fighting Fisherman, Instagram, Fighting Fisherman number nine. Right, thanks, guys, honestly. All the support has been amazing. Um, you may have noticed I lost all my trolls, didn't I? I blocked a couple and the rest just disappeared. Carp Hunter, the one that I literally had an ongoing feud with for ages, disappeared. What a surprise. So I think uh, after all these videos I've done now, I finally started to prove my points I was going on about. But I'll probably get some more um, people giving me, wait, what are you doing, pup? Hey. <laughs> my puppy's doing some random stuff. Um, but yeah, I'm probably going to get some more trolls. Normally do when I do a big video. But um, anyway, I don't care. Right, ciao for now, guys. Like and subscribe. Bing, bang, bosh.